Maria, Maria Teresa, we're the Maria Twins. And today, the Maria Twins are joining thousands of others for the 21st Annual Twin Festival here in Twinsburg, Ohio. It's early in the morning and many twins, such as those too young to walk, as well as these 82-year-old World War II veterans, are getting settled, waiting for one of the weekend's special features. <laughs> Twins Parade. Most of the twins dress alike, some in typical garb, while others have twin themes, twin songs, twin messages, and, well, you get the picture. <laughs> and twins come to Twinsburg from all over the country. We're from Owensboro, Kentucky. Indiana. The parade goes on for about half an hour, and of course, there's a float with a parade queen or two. And at this three-day festival, you can even find twins who are dating other twins. So what's it like being a twin? Oh my God, we love it. We are always together. Inseparable. We, yeah. We know each other's thoughts. We're always on, we, without, without saying. This is like the best friend on the God's green earth. Just feels like having a regular sister. We have the same friends. Do they always talk like that? It's pretty amazing sometimes that they both say the same answer, like a, a multi-word answer, and it's in the same cadence, and it's the uh, same exact words. I live on one end of the farm, he lives on the other end of the farm. We're retired uh, union carpenters. We pay medical claims at an insurance company. But that doesn't mean there aren't differences. We like different men. Yeah. Ah, different it. type <laughs> men. What do you like? Tomato soup. What do you like? Mm, dogs. Her hair is short, mine's long. I mean, we like some same stuff, but a lot of stuff we just just don't like the same stuff. She likes hip hop, I like kind of rocky music, so it's kind of. We look the same, but we're not really. <laughs> I don't like tomato soup. He's a half pound bigger than I was when he was born, and he's still a half pound bigger. <laughs> There's also a strong research component at the festival. There are a variety of studies collecting data from the twins as well as their family members. This University of Pittsburgh study is trying to better understand risk factors for substance abuse seen later in life. This question is uh, what, how well your parent listens to you. The twin data help us to narrow down uh, the sort of genetic and environmental influences on what we know to predict substance abuse later on. But far away from the festival, here in Minnesota, psychologist Thomas Bouchard, Jr. is director of the Minnesota Center for Twin and Adoption Research. Bouchard's interest in twins goes back to the 1960s. When in fact, psychologists believe all psychological traits were primarily determined by parenting and experiences during youth. Early on, Bouchard made certain assumptions. I thought there's some traits probably all environmental, and then other things like impulsiveness that were kind of biological, and I said, we're gonna separate what's biological and what's environmental. The research looked at identical or monozygotic twins who share the same DNA and fraternal or dizygotic twins who share half their DNA. The results with identical twins shocked him. One twin pair after another turned out to be similar across everything we looked at. Now, not identical similar. There's a genetic influence of about 50 percent. But I plotted the profile, personality profiles of one of my early sets of twins and they were like the same person took the test twice. And it didn't matter if the identical twins were reared apart or together. Because our monozygotic twins reared apart show just as much similarity as twins raised together. And if the twins were treated differently by their parents that did not make them less similar. No, doesn't matter. <laughs> And fortunately, people have now replicated that. Other twin studies find the same. Uh, and there's nothing uh, odd about our findings. All twins provide psychologists with an unusual research opportunity. People don't realize that twins are an experiment. They are an experiment of nature. And years ago, if twins were orphaned, it was not unusual to have the twins reared separately. This created another research opportunity. Adoption is an experiment. So when we study monozygotic twins reared apart, dizygotic twins reared apart, monozygotic twins reared together, dizygotic twins reared together, we have a cross between an experiment of nature and an experiment of society. 
and we can actually talk about causal influences, just as any experimenter does. By studying large numbers of twins, researchers have estimated the influence of genes and the environment upon a wide range of behaviors and traits, and they have extended findings with twins to the rest of us by comparing similarities in twins to those seen between ordinary siblings and between parents and children. One of the most controversial extensions involves the influence of parenting. We've long believed that parenting has a major influence on the way children behave, but does it? The answer is not much, <laughs> and that's a real surprise. This should have been suspected long ago uh, when people realized how different any two children in a family are. If it's the family rearing style that causes children to have particular characteristics, there should be a lot more similarity between the siblings than there are. Bouchard emphasizes that these conclusions apply to children reared in typical homes. It should be very, very clear that uh, a child who was beaten and abused and, and mistreated will be different from the same child who was reared in an ordinary environment and properly cared for. The more Bouchard studied twins, the more surprises he found. I thought uh, it would be ludicrous to find genetic influence on social attitudes, authoritarianism, conservatism, even religiousness. Uh, it never crossed my mind that these things would be ge genetically influenced. We acquire our political attitudes and our so social attitudes, and they, they change over time. But as a function of our choosing to expose ourselves to certain kinds of ideas and certain kinds of things. Uh, so I think the genetic influence has to assert itself in terms of making us pay attention to this rather than that. But even if most social attitudes are somewhat genetically influenced, it doesn't mean that genes are your destiny. We'd have been bigots if it wasn't for our wives. My dad was a bigot. He belonged to KKK. We had every right to be a bigot, but we're not. The point here is that when we say these things are genetic, we're talking about a propensity. We're not saying these are fundamentally unchangeable. And twin research doesn't presume genetic explanations. Our job is to find out how things work, and that's basically what twin research does. It doesn't presume it's genetic. A twin design can reveal an entirely environmental event if the cause is environmental. What you need is a, a research design that will answer the question, not presume an answer. Just how important is the environment as an influence? Recall that even identical twins are only 50% similar across traits. So you don't believe in abortions? I, I do. I don't. Certain environmental factors, experiences that these twins did not share, called unique or non-shared experiences, must explain these differences. But just what constitutes important non-shared experiences remains a mystery. We don't have a vaguest idea what they are. It's really amazing. So we have a handle. Genes seem to be ha exerting an influence somewhere around 50%. Unique environmental influences seem to be doing the other 50%. Now, interestingly enough, from the point of view of a scientist, we don't know how the genes do this. That's a mystery. And we don't know how the environment does it. That's a mystery. And there are other mysteries. I think if somebody can explain how the brains of monozygotic twins reared apart get wired to have similar political attitudes, they'll get a Nobel Prize. One of the real surprises to me has been that we haven't found specific genes for specific psychopathologies. 15, 20 years ago, I'd have bet by now we'd have had those genes. But what isn't a surprise is that twins can help us to better understand many aspects of human behavior. I discovered things that contradicted what I believed, what I had been taught. And uh, I think that's what makes science interesting to scientists. They find new things, beliefs they have get overturned. Uh, and uh, so it's, it's been a really exciting adventure uh, along those lines.